Can I tell you the story? I'm going to tell you the story from the beginning because mm. this is cool. Okay. In 2016, the British Museum decided that they were going to take the sacred cloth, cloth from Assam, the Vrindavani Vastra, out of storage and put it on public display. Um, it's usually kept away from the public view and it doesn't come out very often, also because of conservation issues and so on. But this was going to be quite a big exhibition that was going to explore um, Assamese culture more generally and help create the context of this sacred cloth. So before that exhibition, Richard Blurton, who was the, who was the curator of the South Asia department at um, the British Museum, um, he went to Majuli Island, which is on the Brahmaputra River. met up with monks and he learned a lot more about what the, the cultural context was, what, what practices created such a, an amazing cloth and its, and its history. them on his laptop all the images that they have on the uh, British Museum website of the Vrindavani Vastra. So there I was in Bloomsbury writing my PhD and I was researching and I looked up about, uh, I was reading about the monks of Majuli, I understood that there was this Vrindavani Vastra, this cloth that was considered sacred and that lots of people from Assam and the, um, wanted it back and it was this and I, I wondered where it was and then I look and I find that it's, it's in the British Museum which is about less than a mile from my house so I write to some random email address like curator at British Museum with thin hope that maybe I could see this uh, because I realised it wasn't on public display it was in, in some archives at which point Richard Burton writes straight back to me it says come in next Monday and you can come and see it so I was very lucky being a privileged person living in London up the road from it. I went and visited it with him and immediately I thought the monks I've been working with should see this, they should be part of this. <laughs> Uh, we are not uh, vast uh, different because you know the, now with our culture we understand that so what is the England no? so uh, in in uh, in that case that we we thought that England is not uh, so far from India. Is the Majuli tour? Yeah. <laughs> so, and inside is um, your ticket for travel inside London. Yeah. Don't lose it. It's very important, and um, that will get you around on the public transport and everything. So. Oh yeah, we dropped ticket as well. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. What's some Kenya like this in London? Good boy. Good place, eh? How many key key places? ভাল লাগিছে মানে আসলে আমি যেটা যেটু কা উদ্দেশ্য লৈ আহিছো আজ আমি খটন নিত্র আমি পছাৰ কাৰণে যেটা যেটু জৰজি পিটে আমাক হে কৰিছে কাৰণ হেতু খসাকে মানে খুব মানে আমি হত্ৰিয়া সকলে খসাকে তো মানে আমি সদায় কওঁ যে আমি আমি কেনেকে মানে বিশ্ব দৰবাৰ প্ৰতিষ্ঠা কৰিব লাগে কিন্তু এই কথাটো হচে সম্ভৱ হৈ উঠিছে যেন আমি আজি বাহিৰলৈ আহিছো সকলে দেখা পাইছে গুটি বস্তুটো যে হত্ৰিয়া নিত্ৰটো কেটা বাহিৰৰ ব্ৰিটিছ মিউজিয়ামত আমি আহি দেখাইছো হি 
আর কিং কলেজতো আহি সেই বস্তুটো আহি পাইছেহি কারণ ই এটা সচাকে বহুত মানে ডর গুরুত্বপূর্ণ বিষয় আর যেটা মানে হয়ে উঠা নাছিল এই হয়ে উঠিছে সেটা কারণে খুব সচাই মানে বিয়াত আমি সত্রিয়া ফালের আমি মানে সচাকে খুব মানে আনন্দিত এই কথা ইংলেন্ডত এই হয়ে উঠিছে অনলি বিকজ অফ জোজি the time that the monks came and traveled to the UK and they did this meet this tour was 2016 and at that point there was a six months temporary exhibition of the Vrindavan Vastra at the British Museum so there's this huge value being given to this uh, cloth by the British Museum and that's crucial because if before that who, no one's talking about Assam no one's inviting them in fact years ago Babananda had told me that he'd gone to Paris and he was looking at the, um, the, the fragment there and he'd written to people in England and said you know I'd be interested to come across and there it was just it fell on deaf ears nobody actually answered the email so he he needs these he needs people to buy into the value of, of Assamese culture before he can even come and that was what was happening with this Vrindavan Vastra. The scriptures of Assamese Vaishnavism are called the Saritas, and they explore the stories of the Founder Fathers and the Saints, but they also include stories of Krishna. And in those scriptures, there is a mention of our Vrindavan Vastra. And this is, as they describe it in the scriptures, it's a huge, I think 36 foot um, cloth, woven cloth, which has a chronological narrated story of Krishna created into it. So it, this, whatever that's described in these scriptures, no one's sort of seen it or, or um, felt it. It just seems to have disappeared. But in the 1990s, this um, art historian, Rosemary Krill, she um, worked at the V&A for a long period um, and she looked at them, found that there was Assamese writing on them and along with some other art historians they made the match. They said, oh these are the Vrindavani Vastra of the scriptures and that's why it got its name but it's it's kind of important and um, Richard Blurton, he's very careful to always put Vrindavani Vastra in inverted commas in whatever he writes because this name has been attributed by Western art historians to these pieces. It's without a doubt from Assam and it definitely has episodes of Krishna's life woven into it, but it's not a chronological account of his life. And also we know that because they're in these small strips um, and it's not one continuous piece, it's probably something a little bit different, um, perhaps in the same tradition as the one that's mentioned in the scriptures, but um, it's not exactly the same. I think that they actually learnt through the process that there was this strange anomaly between the Rastra that they knew and the one that was there. Mm. And I think there is there was a sense of like, perhaps confusion when you see the one that's at the British Museum and it really doesn't quite fit what, what's in your imagination. It's, it's like, you know, all the descriptions that you've read through your childhood of something and then you kind of come and you say, oh, <laughs> this isn't quite right somehow. But no matter, because it's absolutely filled with beautiful um, stories and references to an Assamese Vaishnavism. So what happens with the tour and with the work that Babananda does um, and the group do with this is that they, they start to animate it. They start to almost like reclaim it on their bodies, what 
the stories that are there in the Vrindavani Vastra. That's what this project ended up being, was that Babananda and 10 other monks um, created a one hour show, a performance that took lots and lots of different components of their performance practices from the monasteries. So playing gongs, um, dancing, doing solo dances, group dances, and also some of these aspects of drama that are almost like pantomime with gorgeous costumes. Um, and they, they just, took off the surface of this of this cloth which has been locked away for so long in the British Museum and took it back took it onto their bodies and then took it around the UK and then performed it to live audiences you know walking around London they look very distinctive in their white clothes and people would often be interested in sort of saying you know, who are they and where they come from and um, and they were See, very happy I, I'm to talk. here. Do you want me and, to take a picture? And so we had some lovely interactions with people as we went round. And then, of course, we had these more formalised interactions with the workshops and the performances, where they were given the time to explain and talk a little bit about their work, and then also even teach people different hand gestures, different dance moves, and, and give them a feel of, of, of this dance form. Um, but it was really fun taking them to the schools because the children's questions were always the most candid. You know, they'd ask them like, why do you not cut your hair? Or um, are you allowed to, are you allowed to go out of the monastery? Or, you know, they'd ask these kind of, these kind of questions. I Tell us what's happening. Okay, so we've lost two of the monks. They're in the car with all the equipment. Um, we're hoping that they they've got the right address on the taxi. I'm not quite sure how this happened. Okay, yeah, we think we found them. I think they've arrived. Um, they're just going to be up here on Wellington Street. So that's where the driver is. And we're going to go and hopefully find the car with all the drums in it, with any luck.
was a, what was allowed by this tour was that the monks were able to unlock something that's kept in a sort of dark, uh, as you as you say, you know, it's underground most of the time in the in the archives. Then it came out, but even even the exhibition itself, it had to be in very low light for preservation reasons. Um, and they studied it, and they looked at it, and they brought it really into the light. to learn the uh, music, dance, and drama. At the same time, we have to study at academics, but outside of the Sutra monastery. So um, uh, after that, uh, now we are adult, so we, we can choose. But so many of the, the uh, devotees, monks, uh, they live, they can live. But they, if they want to marry or they can work, uh, if somebody wants to work outside of the monastery. They're moving around and helping the stories to escape from, from the sort of confines of, of, of British academia and reclaiming it and telling that story across, across England. And not just that, they're not just keeping it on their own bodies either, they're moving it onto other people's bodies, they're spreading the word, they are evangelical, they're excited to say, of course you can learn our dance forms, you know, please stand like this and, and be Krishna. You know, they're, they're not they're not trapping it like we are. They're like moving it around. They're taking it to Newcastle. They're taking it to Somerset House. They're taking it to schools so children can, can try it out. <laughs> What a fantastic performance, great audience as well. People who are less mobile socially, who, who don't fly around the world or who don't go on holidays and so on, their cultures and their stories are invisible to us. They remain invisible to us. And it's, there's lots of reasons why this happens, but visas and border controls is one of the ways of keeping uh, marginalized communities marginalized so this is one aspect of it it's that it's that this this set of circumstances and funding and the and the value that was placed on the Vrindavan Vastra at that time allowed the movement and so yeah that's for the, for me the big significance of the tour was just allowing them to move and allowing these stories to move with them